Just when it seemed that Pennsylvania's medical marijuana business was up and running, there seems to have been a bump in the road. Last month, a Commonwealth court judge sided with some permit holders who say the program gives an unfair advantage to clinical research centers who use a third party to cultivate and process cannabis. They argue it gives those centers, including medical schools, an advantage in getting a permit. This morning, we will hear the thoughts of an attorney, Peter Murphy, a member of Eckerd Siemens, who has counseled clients who have been interested in entering into the medical marijuana business in Pennsylvania. Welcome to the program. Glad you're here. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for having me. First of all, out of disclosure, I just want to, to ask, are you involved in any way, shape, or form with either side of this in terms of representing these parties? In this case, no. Okay. Our firm is not. Very good. So the issue then becomes the, the Commonwealth Court comes out, and it's a single judge, not a panel of judges, Correct. with a decision that says what? How do you summarize it? I think the best way to summarize it is if we look at the Medical Marijuana Act as a whole, there was a specific chapter. Chapter 20. Chapter 20 that provided for medical research and gave the opportunity for some uh, cultivators to partner with medical schools to do that research. The decision that the judge made was at its heart was whether those, uh, what they're called clinical registrants, can sell medical marijuana to the general public, whether there's a commercial aspect to Chapter 20 as well as a research. So they aspect. almost become then competitors to those state licensed Correct. dispensaries that are out there. Is, is that the, the crux of the issue? Yeah, that, that, is, that is, yeah, absolutely. Because what, what the petitioners in this case are pointing to is really economic hardship that they're going to face and that in the form of lost market share or diminution of the value of their permits. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that's exactly it. You're looking at approximately, I believe the number is nine medical schools in the state of Pennsylvania, including some with very deep pockets, University of Pennsylvania, Correct. University of Pittsburgh, Drexel, Thomas Jefferson, the list goes on and on, Temple and Medical School as well. How interested are those facilities in doing this type of research? Is that something that they're clamoring to be able to be a part of? I think they are, and I think it's one because medical research into marijuana is, is what's really lacking, and I think there's a lot of states that want to move this forward. Pennsylvania was very unique in that Chapter 20 doesn't exist in any other state's laws, any, anything like it. So it was a real opportunity for the medical schools and the cultivators to sort of team up and, and help further the research. Interesting. And I think to your, to your question, I think the medical schools were very interested just simply because of the number that, that uh, were certified by the governor last week. Right. And so the governor also coming out and saying that one of the conditions or one of the, I don't want to say ailments, but one of the things that medical marijuana can be treated for is helping with stepping down from opioids, which has been obviously a chronic problem here in the state of Pennsylvania as well. Where does that sort of drive this conversation, the fact that that is part of what can be dispensed legally? I think uh, part of what needs to be done with respect to the research goes to those things such as the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. And it is promising that in states which have had medical marijuana programs, there has been a reduction in the amount of opioids and opioid overdoses. So I think there's definitely something there to study and, and the schools and even the, uh, the cultivators are interested in doing that. It's just a matter of getting it moving. So it's not talking about a legalization of marijuana for recreational use. It's saying using medical marijuana, these cannabis products for treatment of people who are dealing with with addiction. Exactly. Okay. Not, not recreational Got at all. It. So there is a very, very definitive line in, in that regard. Where does this go next? Where does this, how does it get resolved? Is there a case now that has been presented to the legal system? What happens next? There's a couple of things that can happen. Um, initially would be an appeal from the Department of Health. So the suit was filed by current permit, permittees against the Department of Health. They have the opportunity to appeal that decision. Um, there are also other options uh, that might even involve legislative fixes, Change, changing Chapter 20 so it more squarely fits with the intent that those who drafted it, you know, uh, it fits that intent that they had. From a legal standpoint, where would it go next? If there is an appeal after that one judge makes that decision, where does it go next? Um, if, if the case goes to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and, and again, they could come out you know, uh, opposed to the, the, the lower court judge saying, no, we read the statute and we think this does allow for some commercial sales. Because that's really the crux of this, is that the Department of Health is going to draft and implement regulations based on the law. And what the judge was saying was, as I look at the law and the regulations, there's a conflict here. Another judge might come to a different conclusion and say, no, I, I, think, I think it squarely fits. So uh, it'll take time to sort itself out. but. In the back end of this, there could also be a legislative fix 
as, as a way of dealing with the problem. Are you seeing these sorts of cases, these sorts of appeals in other states? Is there, is there a precedent from a legal standpoint elsewhere to say, you know, this is something that happened in Minnesota, in Delaware, in, in Massachusetts, Colorado, et cetera? Well, yes and no. Um, as far as litigation goes, that is something that seems to be common to every state when these licenses are awarded, and I don't think many people are that surprised. But as far as Chapter 20 goes, it is a unique provision, and I think other states will be watching Pennsylvania to see how they handle it, how it's dealt with, work through the courts, and if it's implemented. Because that's one of the things that is unique about the piece here in Pennsylvania. Very good. Thank you very much for being here. Very nice. Appreciate your perspective and your legal expertise on the matter. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right. So we will continue on the Sunday business page. We're going to shift topics coming up, and we're going to sort of drive and dive into what's going on with the Dollar Bank Through Rivers Arts Festival in downtown Pittsburgh. Keep it right here. We'll be right back after this quick break.